All right. Thanks. Um, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to come to the weekly topspin demo. I think we're actually going to be switching this to a monthly schedule very soon, since we have the archives go up on the website all the time, so people can watch at their leisure. But I appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, my name is Brad Barish. I um, do this demo pretty much each and every week to really talk people through topspin, talk to people about what we do as a company. Um, and show some of the sites that are utilizing the Topspin tools. Just to give you a brief background on Topspin, we were founded about three and a half years ago by Shamal Ranasinghe, who now runs our international operations out of London, and a guy called Peter Gocher. And Peter was the founder of DigiDesign and created Pro Tools. And in much the same way that Pro Tools was this democratizing technology platform for the recording business, we take a fairly similar and analogous approach to the direct-to-consumer business, particularly as it relates to music. Although um, we have filmmakers, we've got NFL teams, we've got collegiate sports teams, we've even got uh, comedians um, and, and authors utilizing Topspin. So it's really applicable to a bunch of different verticals, um, but we largely are focused on music as a company. Um, what I'm going to do during the demo is, is basically start out with a really brief overview of the Topspin application. Um, I'm going to talk about some best practices and key learnings as we go through um, some sites that are utilizing the Topspin tools, and then dive back into the Topspin backend um, so that we can do a, a slightly deeper dive on that. Um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and save those until the end. Chances are I'm probably going to answer 95% of your questions as we go along here. Um, and uh, I know, I think, Jeff, you need to jump off at some point, which is fine. These, these demos are all archived um, generally within a day or two uh, at topspinmedia.com forward slash demo. Um, so you can always, uh, always rewatch these at a later time. So to begin with, as I, as I said, we're going to just go ahead and look at the Topspin application uh, very briefly just to give you a, a quick overview. Um, when you log into the application, you're going to see a dashboard view, and the, and the dashboard view really is kind of a 30,000-foot view of what's going on with your overall campaign in terms of money. You're going to be able to see sales reports and monthly statements from within uh, the dashboard view, and you'll see some marketing and sales data down here, um, and you can change to uh, a bunch of different views. Once you're ready to start ingesting products, um, and that's physical and digital goods, um, you come over to the product section, and the product section really is kind of your warehouse or your central repository of all of the different assets that you're going to be uh, utilizing on the platform. So that, that's everything from digital media to merchandise, tickets, memberships, um, packages, digital packages, and fan packs. Um, so those are all the types of assets that you can have. You can actually create bundles from within here once you've actually uploaded all of those different types of assets. Um, and, uh, and this is really where it all begins. Um, this is where you're going to you know, create instances of physical goods that are going to get sold and, uh, and obviously upload digital versions of uh, assets as well. And come over to Promote. This is really the place that you're going to start in terms of promotion and selling. And this is where you're able to create a bunch of different uh, types of campaigns. Everything from our simple email for media, collecting an email address in exchange for some piece of digital content, uh, Facebook for media, single track players, we have redemption codes which can be used um, inside of physical goods. Uh, you, can use, you can use those redemption codes actually to print on uh, like drop cards and, and other uh, physical pieces of, uh, of merchandise like that. Um, download links which can be used via email and then of course you can email and tweet directly from within the Topspin application. So it's going to show you an ongoing list of all those. You can add tags to each one of those campaigns as, as you see fit. When you're ready to start selling, uh, the Sell tab is where you're going to want to start. And this is where you're able to create new Buy buttons, so new offers. And then you can also configure the store. We do have a Store Builder application that's part of the Topspin platform. Um, you don't need to know any HTML whatsoever. You simply upload assets into the product section and very easy to configure that store, which can live uh, on an artist's website, on Facebook, and even through uh, Root Music's band page, which I'll show you um, as we go along on the demo. Um, the fan section is going to be where you're going to see all of your fans. And this is, this is actually a, a really cool section because it's going to give you an overview of all of the fans that you have in your database. And it's going to allow you to segment out those fans uh, based on a bunch of different criteria. 
So you're able to um, segment out by purchasers of a particular um, product. Um, you can sort it by sales, by gender, influencer score, even within a, a particular region. So if you wanted to look at you know, all of your fans in, say, the uh, Los Angeles metro area, you could certainly do that from here. And then finally, the Fulfill tab is really where um, all the fulfillment settings are going to be, and you're also going to see all the orders coming in. So if you're doing fulfillment on your own, um, you can actually, you'll be able to not only issue refunds and, um, and, and look at the orders that are coming in, you're going to mark them as shipped from within here. Um, chances are, though, you're probably going to be working with one of our fulfillment partners, and, um, and so this isn't going to be um, something that you're going to worry too much about. So that's the basic overview of Topspin. Um, you're also able to choose artists if you have a business user account. You can toggle between artists. You can upgrade your account from here. Um, you can send out uh, support messages in the help section, provide feedback to us, um, and so on. So to begin with, um, I would say that square one for any artist that we work with is really the ability and the emphasis on collecting fan emails. And the reason why it's so important is because the, the fans that are acquired most recently are actually the, the most likely to um, transact with you. And it's not by a small percentage either. If we look at, for instance, Paul McCartney, who came to us with hundreds of thousands of emails, um, you know, it actually turned out that the people that were acquired most recently through Topspin were actually the people that um, purchased from him. And it was upward, if you look across all the artists that we work with and all the people purchasing, upwards of 80 to 90% of those people were acquired by Topspin Tools. So this is a great example of somebody who is in the fan acquisition phase of their campaign. They're giving away a free download. This is Jamie Liddell. I don't know if you know him or not. Um, and he's utilizing, this is actually an instance of our, um, our streaming media player. So it has some sort of a call to action that goes back to a particular page. You can also share these very easily on Twitter, Facebook, and embed those um, on, on your blog and what have you. So sharing capabilities built into both the different widgets. And the way that the email for media widget works is a fan puts in their email address, click submit, they get a URL um, or an email delivered to them asking them to confirm their email address. So it's a double opt-in always. And um, we're also capturing geo information based on IP address at that time. So you're able to find out who they are and where they are simply by giving away a free track or, or whatever. Um, free music actually does work the best. Um, we definitely have a lot of experience in terms of, fan, of artists trying to give away you know, uh, videos or PDFs or JPEGs and that sort of thing. And, and by a long shot, uh, music actually does work the best. So if I wanted to share this, if I was a, I am a Jamie Lindell fan, and so if I wanted to share this with people on Facebook, I'll just show you quickly how easy it is to do that. I simply click on share, um, the Facebook share, and I'll say, uh, you know, hey, Jamie Liddell fans. Um, and then I'll go ahead and share that link. And so if we open up my Facebook, what you're going to see here is that email for media widget is now available on my wall. So any of my friends can actually log in um, as they're looking at my wall. They can actually get that free track directly from me, and they can even share it to other people from here, which is really great. So that's how easy it is. One of the other things that we emphasize in terms of fan acquisition, it's really important to get the fan acquisition tools out to as many people as possible. And sometimes it's not enough just to have it on an artist's website. So oftentimes we'll have publicists or marketing people um, utilizing these tools as they're doing outreach to media media sites such as music blogs or, or you know, news organizations like the Los Angeles Times. This happens to be uh, an article written on the band Dum Dum Girls who are on Sub Pop, um, a client of ours. And if you scroll down in the body of this article, you will see an email for Media Widget is actually embedded in, in the middle of the article on the LA Times site, which is really cool. So as a fan, not only can I get the download directly from here, but I can also share it directly from here. So it becomes really an expedient means by which to acquire fans and also spread the word because again there's going to be probably be a lot more traffic to the LA Times site than there is to Dum Dum Girls. Um, likewise on Pitchfork this is just another example of TV on the radio 
And um, as you can see here, if we continue reading on this post, there is a, an email for Media Widget in the body of the article um, directly on Pitchfork. And this is something that we see very regularly, not only on Pitchfork and the LA Times, but on sites like Stereo Gum, Fader, um, Seattle Weekly, and so on and so forth. So people definitely are into utilizing the top spin tools. Um, they're very, very easy to use. Um, they can be branded whatever you want them to be branded with, um, whether it's the artist branding or if you're working you know, with um, radio stations. We've had a couple of artists actually design uh, email for media widgets that had each radio station's um, logo on them. So they were able to offer some free tracks on a radio station website and do some on-air promotion, that sort of thing. So there's all kinds of possibilities and in terms of having a, a flexible tool to collect emails in exchange for a free download. And once you've, once you've acquired a lot of fans and you've kind of gotten the word out, um, you know, most, most artists want to get to selling things pretty quickly. And I will say that you definitely do not want to s just throw up, uh, you know, a store and without doing any fan acquisition. Well, you know, what's, what's most likely going to happen, unless you're some superstar artist, um, and even then it's questionable, but it will fall flat. And, and I can tell you, I, I know of a lot of examples, I can't name names, but what I can tell you is that we've had artist A, who is a global multi-platinum artist, and artist B, who's a, a fairly well-known independent artist. Um, and band B ended up doing better than band A, just simply based on the fact that they did a period of fan acquisition. Um, and really got the word out and really put a lot of effort into setting up a record. Um, Topspin is definitely not a, a marketing plan in a box, nor is it magic. Um, it is only as good as the person executing the campaign, and you still definitely need somebody who has the marketing know-how and the expertise in order to put together a really good timeline and plan. So when you're ready to start transacting, um, the, you know I think the strength of the platform really comes through. Um, this is Lady Gaga, who we've been working with uh, for this last record. She put together three different um, fan-centric uh, offers, starting with this limited edition picture vinyl set. Um, she also has a um, special fan package that comes with vinyl and CD, um, and even has a special uh, edition download for the Mac AIDS Fund. And what you're going to see here, and, and I'll show you a few other sites as we go along, but um, with Topspin, you're able to bundle together physical and digital goods into one single shopping cart. And that's going to include memberships, that's going to include merch, it's going to include music, both digital and physical, and, and, and of course ticketing as well. And I'll, I'll get into ticketing in just a few minutes. But the advantage is, is that what you don't see on this page is go buy my album on iTunes or go, go pre-order my album on, on Amazon or something like that. Because the, the truth is, is that the last thing an artist should be doing is driving people back out to purchase it elsewhere because you're not only giving up that fan relationship, but you're also leaving a bunch of money on the table. Um, you're going to have a higher rate of transaction on a per artist basis um, when utilizing top spin. And if you look across all the artists that we're working with, um, the average transaction amount is $22. And when you get into more established artists and artists that are spending a lot of time on you know, really op running an optimal campaign, um, you're, you're seeing uh, average transaction amounts in the neighborhood of $40 to $60 per transaction. So that's a far cry from the average transaction amount of $3, which is what iTunes has. So you can start kind of understanding where the, where the strength of the platform is in terms of um, being able to offer a really nice experience for the fan. And speaking of nice experiences, um, you know, a lot of artists will have a, a store button in, the, in their nav and you click on that store button and you're taken outside of the artist domain to a completely different URL with a completely different look and feel. And as a result, you end up with a lot of shopping cart abandonment. So what we've done is really optimize the entire purchase flow so that it happens directly on an artist's website. Obviously, I'm on the Lady, Ga the Lady Gaga site right now. So if I click order here, it's going to just bring up a light box and I'm able to actually order my entire package directly from here. Um, change quantities, you can delete it. When you're ready to check out, you just simply go here, um, put in your email address, and, um, and we also have gifting capabilities, so if, you, um, if, if that's of, uh, of importance, you can certainly do that from here. I'm feeling pretty selfish, and um, so I'm gonna buy this for myself. I'm gonna click continue. Oops, need to check that box. And then I put in my, uh, my shipping address and my billing address and so on, and I'm done. 
So it's a really streamlined purchase flow. Um, as far as uh, fulfillment goes, uh, on the digital side, Topspin is doing the fulfillment. And you can actually, you can, we support at a bare minimum 320 kilobit MP3s all the way up to source audio. So we do Apple lossless FLAC um, and any other formats that you could probably think of. So if fidelity is of importance, you can certainly, um, you can certainly opt to make lossless files available. On the physical side, there are basically two ways in which uh, we handle physical fulfillment. One is, is that we have integrated fulfillment. So if you are a Topspin customer, you, you can have physical fulfillment uh, at no additional cost to you. Um, there are some small fees that I'll talk about uh, towards the end when I get into the fee structure, but overall it's, um, it comes at no additional percentage. Um, the 15% uh, the that Topspin takes covers you in terms of doing physical fulfillment, and, and so we do that out of, our, um, out of our warehouse in Van Nuys, California. Um, you can also do it by yourself, and we also have other fulfillment companies um, around the world that are integrated with Topspin and are very familiar with what we do, and you can, you can utilize those partners as well. So we can handle it for you, or you can do it on your own. Um, another, another great site to show you, uh, Portugal Demand, just another pre-order campaign happening right now. Just to show you a little bit of variety in terms of being able to really customize the entire look and feel of what artists are doing with Topspin. So they have, um, you know, what you see here, similar to what you saw in Lady Gaga, is tiered offers ranging in, you know, in price from $115 um, all the way to, um, you know, all the way down to $16, $20, $10 for a digital album. And the advantage is, is that what you don't want to do is, is leave a bunch of money on the table. Um, you want to cover every type of fan that there is, whether that's a super fan or um, just a casual fan that may have seen you play a show uh, the previous night. You want to make sure you cover all different types of fans. Um, as I was talking about uh, in the very beginning, there is the ability to, through the Topspin application, to actually create very simple to build stores on the fly through the Topspin application uh, without any knowledge of HTML whatsoever. Um, and if you want to look at you know, a gallery of, of some of the sites that are utilizing these tools, um, I'd recommend going to this, this website, topspinmedia.com forward slash spin shop hyphen gallery, and you'll be able to see all the different types of spin shops. So I'll just, I'll actually show you one really quickly. Um, this is uh, Trampled by Turtles. Um, and they built this, as you can see, they've got, as you, as you mouse over each of these, you can add it to a cart, and it'll have the uh, purchase flow come up just like you saw on the Lady Gaga site. You can also copy the embed code and actually embed this other places, like on Facebook. So if we go over to Facebook, um, this is actually the artist Clutchy Hopkins, um, who launched a store very quickly on Facebook and um, basically built out a tab um, just called Store, and uh, as you can see, all the offers are available here. He's, got, he's configured it so he has some sort of a featured item at the top, um, and then it uh, automatically paginates it so you can actually skip around and, and shop through the store. I think a much more elegant store, um, and something that we just launched yesterday, is that we announced a um, partnership with Root Music for their band page application. So if you're using Root Music, and this is the, uh, the, the band Beastie Boys, um, if you're using Root Music, like the Beastie Boys are, um, you click on Band Page, and what you'll see is a regular Band Page. It has you know, their photos, videos, and there's a new tab called Store. And so when you click on Store, what you're going to see is all of these offers that are in their store are actually available through their Topspin site as well. So these are all Topspin offers created within the Topspin backend and then surfaced um, in the Band Page application directly on Facebook. So if you're utilizing BandPage, it's super easy. I actually set a few of these up myself um, over the weekend, and it took all of about um, a few minutes. So very, very easy to set up. You just simply use your API key um, in Topspin and connect that with the uh, Root Music application. Very, very simple. Um, one of the other things that I briefly talked about was the ability to sell tickets through Topspin. And this is a great example of an artist um, not only um, selling tickets, but also selling some merch along with those tickets as well. So the band Digitalism, the artist Digitalism, um, uh, selling these uh, tickets in Europe. So you can buy just a simple ticket, or you can buy a ticket in a t-shirt, or a ticket in MP3 uh, version of the album. So they're able to sell albums, plus t-shirts, uh, plus tickets, all directly from their own website. You can see it's thedigitalism.com. 
and the entire purchase flow, very, very simple, comes up just in that light box that I've shown you a couple times before. So super quick and easy. The ability to uh, sell tickets direct to consumer is pretty powerful. Um, there are basically two ways in which we do this. One way is that if there is an opportunity to uh, do an exclusive pre-sale on the artist site before the public on sale and there's a, a fairly extensive tour, it's quite likely that, that we'll do a simple forecast to see if it's, see if it's a, a viable option, but oftentimes we will actually handle the heavy lifting of that, of that tour and putting up a, a really nice page like this. So when I say we'll handle the heavy lifting, what that means basically is that we're going to be talking directly to your ticketing agent and then we'll be dealing directly with the promoters um, to make sure that they get paid on time. Um, the, the other way is that you do it yourself, and that means that you're going to have to front the money, um, take those tickets out of the inventory, deal directly with your agent and the promoters to get those holds placed, and, um, and then make sure that those un any unused tickets actually go back into the, um, back into the pool. So a couple of different options there. Um, it's definitely really nice when, uh, when, when somebody can handle all the heavy lifting for you, though, for sure. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that I wanted to show you, I don't know how, ma I don't know how many of you actually read our blog, but um, in terms of the Root Music um, uh, announcement yesterday, I definitely encourage you guys, if you're interested, to, to uh, check out the blog. And we actually did a really nice post and a how-to video on getting up and running with, uh, with the Root Music application. Sorry, I meant, to, I meant to have that tab a little bit closer to the Beastie Boys thing that I showed you. Um, one of the other capabilities is, uh, is the ability to sell memberships or subscriptions through Topspin. And this is a great example of an artist doing that, uh, Jim Noir, who has put up a subscription where you can pay £2.99 a month and get everything he releases over the course of your membership. And the cool thing is, is that with the membership product, you can actually gate products behind the membership. So in other words, you could sell a membership with other physical and digital goods, when somebody buys that membership, they're going to connect that membership with a common social networking ID or email address. And then, and then once they try and purchase a product that requires membership, they'll have to log in with whatever, with, with, with whatever identifier you've used to create that membership. So let me just show you uh, quickly how easy it is to do. Um, I'm going to try and purchase this. It's going to throw up a roadblock and say that purchase of this product requires privileges of the Noir Club one month membership. I don't happen to have a membership, but if I did, I would click login. And most likely, I would actually connect that login with, say, my Twitter handle. So what I could do here is I'd click on Twitter and log into my membership account. So again, this is really nice because I don't have to create yet another username and password that I need to remember. So I was already logged into Twitter. It logged me in but I'm not a, a Noir Club member, so it's not going to let me go forward. But essentially, it picks up where it left off, and you're able to continue that purchase um, without having to re-add it to your card or anything like that. So very simple and elegant. Um, an artist that kind of took that to the nth degree is Linkin Park. And Linkin Park had a 10-year-old uh, fan club that they actually moved over to the Top Spin platform. And when they did that, they created three different tiers of membership. There was one level of membership for people that paid um, $60 a year. There was another level of membership for people that paid $10 a month. And then there's yet another level of membership for anybody that bought anything from them directly. And this came in really handy when they decided to announce their tour. When they announced their upcoming tour at the end of last year, um, they, put, they had a pre-sale for those tickets. And the, um, the type of membership you had determined which day you actually could purchase pre-sale tickets, which is really cool. So if you were a $60 a year member, you would have, have first day access to all those pre-sale tickets, which means that you're probably going to get the best seats in the house. It also, as a side note, it actually made sure that those tickets actually went to the fans. And if they were going to go to a secondary market um, with scalpers, that those scalpers actually had to pay Lincoln Park $60 to even get at those tickets. So it was a really nice way to not only um, ensure that fans got those tickets, but also a way to reward them um, for, uh, for the fact that they were a member of the LP, um, LPU fan club. So there's all different types of merchandise. They do these, uh, these meet and greets. 
they actually have um, gated uh, chat behind their membership, so you would have to be a member in order to chat with them. They use um, a program called Tiny Chat for that. Um, so there's really all different kinds of things that you can gate behind the membership, um, whether it's pre-sale tickets or um, special offers or special merch bundles. Um, all of that is possible through, through Topspin. I think that pretty much covers all of the, the functionality on the front end. So now we'll log into the Topspin application and, and kind of pick up where we, where we left off in the beginning. And that's to do a, a slightly deeper dive on the, on the Topspin application itself. So as I said, in the dashboard view, you're going to see um, a 30,000 foot view of what's happening with your overall campaign. Um, sales reports are going to be um, accessible at any given time. So you can look at products and offers, look at last year, for instance, and see, that, see which offers were selling the most, how many they sold, what percentage it accounted for, and then you can actually go directly to those offers from here. Monthly statements, as they're done, are going to be appearing in the monthly statements section, so you'll be able to download those as soon as they're ready. Um, once you're ready to start putting products into the um, application, you would simply upload uh, the digital files, and you'll want to start with an Apple lossless file, and it will create the iterations from there. So you, don't, you only have to upload one file, um, and if you're uploading a large number of files, um, we do have an FTP uploader that would allow you to um, do those much more efficiently than through the web portal. Um, creation of physical goods is very, very simple. Um, I'll create a, a t-shirt. Um, I was listening to the new Arctic Monkeys on my way to work today, so I'm going to use them as an example. Um, we'll just create an Arctic Monkeys t-shirt. And um, if I had a UPC, I could put it in here. You can decide what currency you're going to actually offer this in. Uh, wholesale cost on this T-shirt is going to be, uh, oops, not 12 bucks. We'll do 5 bucks for the T-shirt. Um, available small, medium, large, extra large. It's only going to be available in black. And when I'm ready, I just click Save. And it's going to take me to a, um, a spreadsheet of sorts where I'm able to fill in an individual factory SKU UPC um, for every gender, size, and color combination. Now, it just so happens that this, this site that, or this, this account that I'm using for the demo is actually being fulfilled by our integrated fulfillment solution. Um, and so I am unable to actually change these, um, the quantities. But if you were filling yourself, you would be able to change those. So only the fulfiller has the ability to go in and change the quantities and set the weights um, as, uh, as they're going to be shipping those products out. So once I'm finished with that, I simply save this panel and I'll go to uh, back to the summary and what you'll see is the Arctic Monkeys t-shirt is now available to be bundled with other physical and digital goods. So if I wanted to, I'm going to actually create a package and this is going to be the, uh, the Arctic Monkeys uh, fan bundle. So in this fan bundle I'm of course going to have the t-shirt that I just created, so I'll add that to the package. Um, I've got some audio tracks that I'm going to include with that, so um, we'll switch over to audio tracks here. Not sure what happened there. I'll try this again. Arctic monkeys fan bundle. So we'll grab um, merchandise, put this t-shirt in. We've got some audio tracks. We'll grab those, put those in the package as well. And then maybe I've recorded a couple of videos too. So we'll just grab a couple of videos and include those. So very easy to create um, a package. Um, once you're done, you click save the package and we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. Um, you can, if you wanted to, you could uh, give a catalog ID or UPC for this. You may want to put in some sort of a description um, and once you're ready to go, just click save this panel. So we'll, as I said, we'll come back to that in just a second. So when you're ready to start promoting and, and collecting email addresses in exchange for uh, free downloads, for instance, um, you just come in to promote and we'll just, I'll just show you how easy it is to create an email for media widget. 
So this is going to be uh, Arctic Monkeys free download. And um, it'll say free download from Arctic Monkeys. You can change the size, the color, what the marketing message is, who it comes from. So um, if you've got an account set up, um, it would have the artist name filled in already. And um, if, you, if you're concerned about COPPA compliance, um, you can certainly require that fans enter a birth date beforehand. This is really nice for uh, major label artists. Oftentimes we do have to comply with uh, COPPA laws and um, having that ability to do that directly from within the application is, is pretty great. So in this case, I'm gonna give away an audio track. I'm gonna choose a track, and this is just pulling from that products area we were just in. So I'll choose this track, and um, I can decide to give it away as either an MP3 all the way up to source audio. Um, since I'm giving it away for free, I'm gonna do MP3 only, and, uh, and then I'll add a single image to this as well, and we'll just use uh, We'll use this one. So it'll have some sort of a picture. There's a, um, a, uh, a preview of it. And once you're ready to go, you just click Publish, and you're done. So all you would do is just copy this embed code right here, and you'd be on your way to um, collecting email addresses. Now, once, you, once you've started collecting email addresses, the ability to actually see what's happening with your overall campaign is, is obviously important. So if we click on Email for Media Widget and, and go to uh, a campaign that that my buddy Bob has already done. What you're going to be able to see on the back end is um, how many views it received, how many clicks it got, new email subscribers. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom here, it's going to give you an overview of all the different sites that actually have this widget embedded on them. And I can sort it by percentage of total views if I wanted to. So I could get a, in descending order, a list of all of the sites that were driving the most amount of fan acquisition for me. So this really puts you in a position of, of power to know what's happening with your overall campaign and, and also have all of the data be connected together. And I think that that's one of the, the strengths of the Topspin platform is that you're, you're no longer using kind of this fragmented approach to merchandising, marketing, um, fan management, and, and commerce. Um, you're, you're utilizing one single platform with one unified shopping cart where all the data is actually connected together for you. So you don't have to connect the dots in a complex Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can see how your campaigns are working as they're working and you don't have to look back in time um, to see how your marketing actually went. Those days are long over and, and if you're still doing it that way, you're doing it wrong. Um, there are just great tools available uh, like Topspin to actually create marketing campaigns and look at how those campaigns are doing on an ongoing basis real time. So um, once you're ready to start selling, you would come over to the Sell tab, and this is where you're going to create an offer. So I'm going to create a new offer, and this is going to be the Arctic Monkeys Fan Bundle. And um, it's going to be a t-shirt plus um, three songs plus two videos. And um, I'm going to make this available on the Topspin store if I wanted to. Um, that just means that it will be, uh, be able to be surfaced not only in, uh, in the Spin Shop, but also in the uh, Root Music band page application as well if you're utilizing that. Um, I'm going to choose a product here. In this case, I'm going to choose a package. And I'm going to choose that package that we just created, Arctic Monkeys Fan Bundle. Because it has audio and video in it, it's going to give me some choices in terms of what formats I'm able to offer my fans. So I'm going to offer it in high quality MP3, Apple Lossless, and, uh, and FLAC as well. And then the video files, I'm going to offer in up to 480p, uh, standard def H.264. Um, if I wanted to, I could associate streaming player with it. Um, I can set up automated pre-orders, which is really nice. So you can set a digital delivery date. Um, and so if I wanted to set this for the 28th um, at 1041 10, a.m., um, I could do that from here. And basically what I do is on that date, it's actually going to deliver the, the digital goods um, of the package that you've picked. Um, and then as people are ordering, you can also set a different package for instant gratification. You can also decide to continue offering that after street date. And then also, um, here's where you're going to be setting 
the street date product that's going to be fulfilled. So very easy to configure, very easy to set up. Um, once you're ready to go, um, you can basically set it and forget about it until, um, until the day that it fulfills. So I'm not going to set this up as a pre-order, but um, we'll keep going here. Uh, I'm going to set the pricing on this. So this is going to be $39.99. I'm going to calculate the fees, and I'll talk about the fee structure in just a few minutes, but it's going to give you a breakdown of, of where all the fees are going. If I wanted to, I can restrict quantities. Um, and uh, let's see. If I have tickets, um, ticketing fees are 10%. And if I wanted to um, hide that and create an all-in price, I could just check this box to do it, or it would just show up as a line item ticketing fee. Um, I can set geographic sales restrictions. So if I wanted to only make this available in the United States and the United Kingdom, for instance, I could do that directly from within here. Um, if I'm going to have an access requirement, for instance, if I have a membership product that is, um, is going to be the gate for, for this particular product, I would set that up in here. Um, set some post-sale messaging. Here's a preview of my buy button. When I'm ready, I just click publish. We are integrated with uh, SoundScan reporting and uh, digital reporting for the OCC in the UK. So if reporting is of importance to you, um, just know that we do have that ability. It is limited to the enterprise level, uh, the enterprise level plan on Topspin. So there are three basic plans, as you as you may know. If we go to um, topsmedia.com forward slash uh, sign up. It's going to give you an overview of, of, of those three different plans. So we've got the basic Topspin plan, Topspin Plus, and Topspin Enterprise. The biggest difference being that Topspin Plus um, is going to be, uh, or sorry, Topspin is going to be limited to 2,000 emails. So if you have more than 2,000 fans in your database, um, it means that you're going to have to upgrade to Topspin Plus in order to use the mail features. Um, the automated pre-orders are limited to Topspin Plus, and if you have over 20,000 emails in your fan database, then you're going to have to or, um, upgrade to Topspin Enterprise. And as I said, Enterprise is the only um, the only plan that utilizes uh, and integrates the reporting for SoundScan and OCC. You're also able to do some split accounting, which is really nice having the ability to decide on a product by product basis who gets paid for those products and how much. Um, that's going to be limited to the enterprise plan. Um, both of those are, are hard costs for us. We actually have people at our company that are um, whose job it is to make sure that that runs smoothly. So, so we need to uh, make sure that we're covering our costs on that. So once you've created the buy button, you're selling stuff, you're, you've got emails coming in from, uh, from your fan acquisition phase of the campaign, you're going to want to look at who your fans actually are. So we click on the fan tab and I'm going to click on all data here. And the first thing that I may want to do is look at um, you know, all of my fans in descending order based on how much money they've spent. So I click, all I do is click on sales and it's going to sort my entire fan base. Give it a couple seconds, there we go. Um, so now I'm looking at my entire fan base based on sales um, in descending order, and if I wanted to, what I could do is grab all the people that have spent $60 or more with me, and I'm actually going to put those people into a, a, a tag. So I'm going to call these people my biggest spenders. Now, this is, this is really, like, the ability to do that alone is not something that you're going to get with a constant contact or MailChimp. And not that those aren't really great, robust email tools. They are. By no means am I, am, I, am I trying to say that they aren't. But they also live outside of all of the other things that you're doing on the marketing side and on the commerce side. So it's not going to have data connected to each of those email addresses um, based on what, what, per, what, what somebody has purchased before or how they were acquired or what campaign was used to acquire them. Um, so you, you would definitely not be able to do things like this if you were utilizing kind of that fragmented approach that I was, was kind of talking about earlier. So I could add a tag to these people, call them my biggest spenders. I'd click save tag and it would end up here in the left hand column in my, uh, in my save tag. So at any given time I could go to biggest spenders, look at who those people are, select all rows on this page, click send, and now I'm sending an email blast out to just my biggest spenders. So I can schedule a send from here if I wanted to, uh, put in a subject line saying thanks, 
and uh, actually create the email from within the application. If I've got some HTML code, I can paste that in here as well. It's worth noting that in our experience, the emails that work the best are emails that look like an email from your buddy. And that means black text on a white background. If you're feeling especially fancy, maybe one JPEG and, and really focusing on a single call to action, getting away from doing a kind of marketing speak message, uh, newsletter type of format. Um, we find that those do far less in terms of conversion, open rate, and click through rate. And then also thinking about the subject that you're, that you're uh, utilizing in your email and utilizing something that um, perhaps is a bit cryptic um, and, and you're trying to get people to open it. And, and if you think about it that way, instead of saying, hey, my new album's available, say um, you know, something a little bit more um, catchy or a little bit more tricky in terms of um, trying to get people to open those messages. So uh, you can send a preview email to make sure it looks okay. Once you're ready, you click, click send very quickly and easily, uh, send out email blasts. And if we go back to the uh, promote tab, I'll just show you kind of um, how all this looks on the back end. If we go to email and look at an email blast that was sent out, um, this particular announcement, uh, you can see how many emails it was sent, delivered, how many people viewed it, total clicks, click-through rate, unsubscribes, bounces, etc. So unsubscribes and bounces are going to be removed immediately, um, but it does show you all the data on the back end. It's going to have click tracking in here, tell you percentage of clicks, number of clicks um, for each of those URLs that was, uh, that was there. So if we go back to, um, to our fan section, um, you, can, you can slice and dice your fan base a, a number of different ways. Um, radius of a postal code if you wanted to, um, so if you knew a, you know, a postal code, if you're in uh, New York, for instance, um, and you want to do a, a radius of 50 miles from within New York City, you would uh, give it a second to refresh here, and there's all of the emails, um, all of your fans that were, were within a 50-mile radius of that particular zip code. You could do it within a particular region as well. So if you wanted to look at California and uh, Los Angeles, um, give it a second again to refresh here, and we'll look at all data. And there are all my fans, 224 of them, that were in a particular area. You can also do purchasers of a particular product. So if I wanted to grab all of the purchasers of the um, iPhone, iPod download of this film that my buddy Bob is selling, these are all the people that, that did that. Um, and what I could do is actually segment out those fans further. So if I wanted to email those fans, um, that were in a particular area, what I would do is click select all, click send, and so I've got 25 emails here, and then I wanted to maybe, let's see, I'm trying to think of how, how I wanted to do this. Um, if I wanted to exclude people that were in a particular area of the country, um, I could go to region and say, um, you know, this is going to be in, uh, um, um, you know, maybe, oh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to do a postal code. I don't mean to pick on people in Beverly Hills, but they're such an easy target sometimes. So I'm going to exclude people that are in this list um, that live in Beverly Hills. So it looks like 62 emails out of my, uh, out of my total email list um, were excluded from there. So then I can create the, the email and I'm ready to start going. Um, we also, um, within, the, um, within the fan section, we're also collecting a bunch of information um, from outside of the Topspin system and pulling it in. Um, one of those companies that we work with is Next Big Sound. If you're not familiar with Next Big Sound, they're a really great product, um, great bunch of guys that actually um, uh, collect information uh, from the social networks all over the, all, over the, all over the web. So you're able to see what's happening with your, your campaign on a bunch of different touch points online. You're able to look at all that data. You can compare artists together. So let's just say that you wanted to compare um, Arctic Monkeys with, um, oh, I don't know, Beastie Boys and uh, maybe one other artist. You can look at their overall campaign, what they're, what, what, how they're doing, 
And in the context of a topspin campaign, this is actually really helpful to know, um, you know how the artist touch points online are actually being affected by the campaign that you're running on topspin. So um, that's the next big sound. I would definitely encourage you to try out their Premiere product. Um, I don't get paid to say that. I truly believe that it's a, a pretty amazing product. Um, it integrates all kinds of stuff from BDS, from uh, radio play to uh, blog posts and puts it in a really nice format showing you all kinds of uh, demographic information and statistics. We also have fan generated content that we're pulling in. So it's going to pull in content from blogs. Um, it's, if there were posts about your particular artist, let's just say that again it's Arctic Monkeys, um, it's going to pull in um, a bunch of blog posts uh, about Arctic Monkeys. Doesn't look like any were found, which is kind of weird. Um, and, um, and, then, and then it'll pull in tweets if those are found, Flickr photos as well. And then finally, um, we're working with a company called Rapleaf, and Rapleaf actually collects uh, demographic information on you know, 400 million people all over the world. So when somebody gives us their email address, or gives you as an artist their email address, um, that email address is then uh, queried against Rapleaf's database. And Rapleaf can come back and tell you all kinds of information um, about those particular fans. And it can also create audience profiles. So it's not going to have 100% coverage on your fan base just quite simply because 100% of your emails um, of your fans aren't going to be connected with data on the Rapleaf side. But it can give you some really nice leading indicators um, such as a breakdown of gender. Um, it can give you age ranges. So if you wanted to look at the age range and um, how much money was you know, um, being spent by people in those different age ranges, you can do that. You can even look at interests. So if you wanted to look at um, your sales and where people's interests lie um, for those sales, that can be very helpful. Country breakdown, influencer score. Influencer score is really um, a, uh, an amalgamation of, you're basically telling, um, you know, how influential the person is based on their social graph. So that's going to be number of followers on, on Twitter, number of friends in Facebook, so on and so forth. So it's going to, there's an algorithm on the back end and it spits out a score based on, um, based on a bunch of different criteria. And so you can see on an ongoing basis what percentage of your fans um, have a particular score and what sales um, are being represented by, by each of those scores. And when you go back to um, the summary, what you're going to see in the fan section is um, where it's possible they're actually attaching an influencer score to those people. So you could do a targeted email blast for people with a score of 80 and above to see if, for instance, um, that outreach is more successful in terms of getting something accomplished on a campaign basis than, than it would sending it out to, um, to all of your fans, for instance. So anyway, there's a bunch of different ways that you can segment out your fan base and a bunch of things that you can do based on all the information that's being pulled in through Topspin. Um, and then finally, the Fulfillment tab. Um, not a whole lot to show you here, really. Um, it's going to have each of the orders as they're coming in. It's going to tell you what people are purchasing, the shipment info. Um, if you have tracking information um, and you're, you're actually doing it yourself, you can update a receipt and send it with tracking information. Um, you can also issue refunds from here as well. So I think that pretty much does it for the front end um, and the Topspin application itself. Um, a couple of things before I take any questions you guys may have. One is, how does Topspin make money? So um, first of all, there's, there's the monthly plan or yearly plan that you're going to pick based on, on really what your needs are as an artist or a label manager, etc. Um, as a company, Topspin is taking 15% of everything that is sold through Topspin except for tickets. Um, and tickets are a flat 10%. Um, there are two pass-through costs. One is for bandwidth, and that's 15 cents a gigabyte. Um, just to put that into perspective, if you're selling a, an entire album um, at 320 kilobits, you're talking about four cents on average for an album. Um, and then also credit card processing is going to be passed through, um, and that's 2.2% plus 30 cents a transaction. Both bandwidth and credit card processing are straight pass-through costs. We're not making any money there. Um, and when you sell tickets, the credit card fee is actually, um, is actually rolled up into the 10%. So it is an all-in price um, for ticketing at 10%. And it's going to be 10% on top of the face value. That 10% is going to be passed on to the consumer, so that's not a cost that you're going to be incurring um, as a client. 
On the fulfillment side, as I mentioned early on, um, fulfillment comes at really no additional uh, percentage. Um, there are two small fees that are associated with um, receiving and storage of goods in our warehouse. Um, we charge a nickel per item to receive and $15 per month per pallet um, if you're going to store stuff in our warehouse. And basically those costs really just cover us in terms of an artist just dropping off a bunch of stuff in the warehouse and never selling through it. So um, those are all the costs involved. I think that pretty much covers everything. Oh, one last thing. How do people work with us? Um, there, there are a few different ways people work with us. One is, is that they get started doing it themselves. Um, we offer a class pretty much every other week in our Santa Monica office. Um, we do it um, at least once a month in New York and from time to time in London and Nashville as well. So it's a one-day course on utilizing Topspin. It's really geared more towards um, people with a marketing background who are getting started with Topspin and really want to get up and running very quickly. Um, we also have a partnership with Berklee College of Music. They offer a 12-week online course that's available through, um, through their, their online curriculum. Um, I don't recall when the next course starts, but you should check, um, just do a go simple Google search for uh, Topspin in Berkeley and you'll find it uh, pretty easily. Um, and that's really geared more towards people that don't necessarily have the marketing expertise and background, um, but are looking to learn how to, how to start marketing, and in particular how to market with Topspin. Um, we also have a full ecosystem of partners that can help artists uh, get up and running with Topspin. So if we go to uh, our expert section on topspinmedia.com um, and click over to marketing, for instance, you're going to see a whole list of marketing partners that we've worked with along the way that are very familiar with Topspin, can do everything from you know, website design to web development um, to um, all the way to fulfillment if you, if you need somebody to do fulfillment. So we have a whole host of companies that we work with. Um, and if you're interested and, and aren't inclined to do it yourself, I definitely recommend you, you visit this page on our website and, and check out some of the, uh, the companies that we're working with. You can also email me directly, and I'm happy to put you in touch with anybody. Uh, my email address is just brad at topspinmedia.com. Um, 